New Science Fiction. Hello, I'm Katrina Skepper and welcome to VIP. Later on, I'll be talking to Hollywood film star Matthew Modine. But my first guest today is Justin Sullivan, lead singer of the rock band New Model Army. They burst onto the music scene in 1984 with their debut album Vengeance, fueled by their dissatisfaction with the Thatcher government. Their incessant touring and original fashion sense has elevated them to cult status all over Europe. And their latest single is Wonderful Way to Go, taken from their new album Strange Brotherhood. Let's take a look at a clip. Tell me a story, tell me no lies We touch each other, yes, but only with our eyes Some kind of game, playing like with desire It's just beneath the skin that I'm alive Colors pattern and I've ever seen Way to go, <laughs> Justin. Welcome. That presumably means what a wonderful way to depart this world. It could do. Could do. Could be anything really. When you wrote it, what did it mean? Um, it's one of those songs. That some songs get written really fast. Um, you know, idea, bang, 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 done. That song actually sort of came together over like three years. Three. Musically, the idea was to put the sort of hardest, fastest, toughest. R&B rhythm section that you'd see playing in your local pub and loved, together with something kind of Vaughan Williams and Elgarish over the top. Um, lyrically, I think it started um, with a near death that I had in um, a long time ago, in '92. On stage, when you on stage, and then, uh, and then the rest of the lyrics sort of got filled in over the last three, four years. That was uh, an, obviously a life-threatening experience. Tell us exactly what happened. Um, Someone was showing poetry in Switzerland. It was the end of the last encore, and I put my hand in, in a stage light and picked it up to sort of shine on someone in the audience. And um, it wasn't on. And then the light engineer saw that I wanted to be turned on. And as he turned it on, um, I had my hand on the current, and it gripped on, like it stuck on, instead of throwing me. I remember the current coming up my left arm and thinking, mistake. And then, uh, and then it was like... I was gone, and I was fixed on this thing for about 10 or 12 seconds because everyone thought it was part of the show. On my back sort of line, there was light going on. So nobody came to you until... So after 10, 12 seconds, one of the roadies went, oh, that's Sorry. not right, and they kicked it out of my hand. And then uh, someone carried me downstairs into the dressing room, and I came back about two or three minutes later with this Swiss guy sitting astride me, pumping at my heart, and my best friend screaming in my ear to come back. So did it make you reevaluate what you were doing with your music, with your life? Yeah, I think... I mean, I came back to England, I remember sitting in the garden, it was summer, for about two weeks, going, wow, trees, wow, sky, you know, it was very like that. Mm. And gradually that feeling went. It was a bit like Fearless, the movie, mm. where you tried to hold on to that, mm. that sense of immortality and that sense of, now I understand what life's all about, mm. but gradually it recedes. It, it recedes and I remember making yeah. some mental notes. Remember the things that matter, like... The people that you love, the people around you, that's the only thing that matters. What about this album? Because it's taken some time for you to construct it, to produce it. It's self-financed, isn't it, but on your new label. And it's called Strange Brotherhood, which presumably is to do with the group as well. Yeah, we're a very strange brotherhood. <laughs> I don't think that... I think most groups are a bit like that. I, that Making things together, you're, you're closer than brothers and yet not even friends in sometimes. Because you you're know. working together. And yeah, it's a weird together. relationship. I remember the, there, is, there are strange things about New Model Army. There was one night when there was five of us sitting around a table in the studio yeah. and we were trying to think of one album in the history of music that we all loved and we could not think of one that we all have in common. That you all agreed on. Which, well, which is fairly unusual, I think. Do you remember what yours was? No, I mean, we, we, we tried to think of anything that we all loved. But, we, but in particular, would you remember the album that you loved, one album that you think... Oh, I could, no, I, th I, I named a hundred, <laughs> but, there wasn't, but there weren't, like, there wasn't, there wasn't a consensus. Yet. No, the, and yet there you are, like. a brotherhood, as it were, pr producing very original yeah. music. We thought that we made very accessible music. It turns out that it's too extreme for the majority taste. Mm. Not in a sort of very obvious way. I think it's there's not to something. It's to do with a sort of anarchic, slightly political stance that you have. No, I don't think it is to do with that because that's only a small part of what we do. Um, I think it's to do with the fact that, um, like a lot of Englishmen, we're kind of, sort of a bit repressed, you know. That's, 
And so, and so when we get making music, it's like, ah, oh, it's yeah. a real release. And we're very sort of openly emotional, we're openly passionate. And we haven't really got our tongues in our cheeks at all. We're, we're very sort of... Real, oh. angry. Whatever it is, yeah. emotional. In the 80s, I mean, I know you're violently anti the Thatcher government, and that was obviously expressed in your lyrics, but it's not so relevant today, but music still stands for itself, doesn't it? I think when people first start writing lyrics, they have a need to say, I believe in this, I believe in that, I believe in, you know. Mm. Um, I did quite a lot of that writing lyrics in the first couple of albums. Having done that, I mean, it's now like 15 years on, I actually still believe more or less the same things I believed in then. I mean, it's very easy to say, I believe in justice, well, right, I do. But there's no need to write the same song again and again and again. Now, Justin, looking back, some people might think that your sound has changed, but let's remind ourselves of uh, a previous album. I think it's uh, when you were playing on stage, you are playing Purity from the album Impurity, is that right? Uh, this is a video from 1990, isn't it? It's going back a little, isn't it? Let's um, take a look. This is before they cut my hair out. There you go, Purity. Do you think your sound has mellowed at all on the new album? Every album's got all sorts of different feels on it. I mean, that's the thing, is that we haven't got one sort of mood. It really depends what sort of day you have when you write a song. I mean, everybody's a kind of mixture of nerve endings, and people have great days when they feel that they love the world, and days when they really want to kill something and hurt something, and, and, and so we're the same. So every album's a kind of mixture. Are you less disillusioned with the political climate? I mean, do you think that had there not been the Thatcher, you wouldn't have actually, the Thatcher government, you wouldn't have been no, stimulated I'm, I'm to write? I'm a political them. animal, and I, I hate injustice like everybody does. And there seems to be just as much injustice now as there was in 1984, to be quite honest. Um, in some ways, it's harder now because... Um, I mean, I never thought that the election in England would change everything. Mm. But there, is the, there was the feeling that it would change something. Mm. Uh, in the years gone by, not much has changed. It's really. interesting because the name of your band, New Model Army, sounds incredibly contemporary, and yet it has a very historical um, base to it. Tell us about that. Where did it come New from? New Model Army comes from the army that won the English Civil War back in... Um, 17th century. I mean, it doesn't mean a lot to people outside Britain, but when we first got the band together, we thought we were going to play two gigs in Bradford. <laughs> it was just because we, we loved music one, and we wanted thing, to do yeah. something. We never thought we were going to become a kind of worldwide band. Um, but from that time, I mean, the 1650s in England was perhaps the most in, interesting time in our Period history. In history yeah. There oh, was Cromwell. two or three years, basically, of anarchy in Britain before Cromwell took the army and imposed kind of military dictatorship. But during the years of anarchy, from the army and from a lot of ordinary people came all the first ideas about democracy, socialism and, and so on. Does it bother you that people might just like your music and not be that interested in your political message? No, that's fine by me. I mean, the <laughs> music comes first. It always has to us. Mm -hmm. People go on and on about philosophies and, and ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, I admit I'm interested in ideas, um, but, but the music's always come first. Mm -hmm. the music comes first, we write the lyrics second. That's wonderful. And I know you're going on tour throughout Europe. You're going all over the place. Germany, Spain, Switzerland, We're France. going all around Europe up until the World Cup. Yeah. Um, then we kind of stop for a bit during the World Cup. And then uh, we do some more festivals over the summer. Then later in the year we hope to go all sorts of other places. Um, Far East, South America, Russia. Great. Um, all the sort of parts of the world that we're not getting to this. Well, I know everybody's very excited and the fans especially about your new album. So good luck with that. And uh, we'll see lots more of New Model Army, I'm sure, in the future. Thanks. That's great. My thanks to Justin Sullivan and good luck with the album Strange Brotherhood. I'm taking a quick break now, but in a moment, Hollywood star Matthew Modine, so don't go away.